Welcome to Maze Lead Code Challenge. This problem is find the town judge. In the town, there are n people labeled 1 to n. There's a rumor that one of these people is secretly the town judge. If the town judge exists, then the town judge trusts nobody. Everybody trusts the town judge, and there's exactly one person that satisfies 1 and 2. You are given trust an array of pairs, A and B, representing the person labeled A, trusts the person labeled B. So if a town judge exists and can be identified, return the label of the town judge. Otherwise, return minus one. So yeah, this array that we're given trust is basically a relationship list. It what shows us like the edge between these uh, people, one being the truster and two being the trustee. Uh, there are a couple of assumptions here that make this problem a little bit easier. We know that all the trust values are going to be different, so they're all unique. There's never going to be any repeats. And uh, because um, of the number of people, for this to, all the conditions to be held true, like we could use that to our advantage. So say that we move through the entire list and count up the number of unique people who trust. We know that like the number of unique people that trust somebody should be n minus 1. There should be just one person that doesn't trust anybody else. Otherwise, this whole condition doesn't hold. There's either no judge or there's multiple judges or, or whatever. Uh, that, that wouldn't work. Uh, and the second thing we could see from our second element is who is trusted, right? So if this judge exists, everybody trusts this judge. Um, but this tr judge isn't going to be trusting anybody. So I'll start coding it out. It'll start becoming a little more clear. Here's my basic approach. First, I'm going to find all the people who trust and make sure numbers match. Okay. Once I uh, find all the people who trust somebody, then there should be one person who doesn't trust anyone, right? So find the potential judge. And once we identify who this potential judge might be, the one person who doesn't trust anybody, we have to make sure that everybody trusts the judge. So the way I went about doing this is creating a set. And that way we could just store the unique number of values and find a length of that to make sure these conditions make sense. Um, because if any one of these conditions doesn't hold, then we could immediately return in minus one. So say that I'll create a set here, people who trust. These are going to be all the unique people who trust somebody in the town. And I'll iterate through the list trust. A and B, that's the truster and the trustee. A is the truster, B is the trustee. And we'll just add the truster into people who trust, right? So once that's finished, we could check immediately. Say, all right, is the length of people who trust, is that not equal to n minus 1? Because if it's not equal to n minus 1, then this condition doesn't hold. It has to. There has to be one person that doesn't trust anybody. Okay. So now that we know that there's one person who doesn't trust anybody else, let's let's find him. Let's pinpoint who this potential judge is. So the way I did that is for i in range of 1 through n plus 1, actually, because, um, you know, it's, we have to, it's not zero indexed. We're going, for, like, 1 is the first person and, and n is going to be the last person. So we have to go all the way to n plus 1. And we'll check um, if i not uh, in, if i not in, um, people who trust, then we'll say, okay, he must be the potential judge. Potential judge equals I. So if I not in people who trust, and let's initialize potential judge as none, just so I don't get an error later. Even though this probably shouldn't happen, but hey, you just never know. So once we identify the potential judge, let's um, let's count up the number of people who trust this judge, right? Because if the number of people who trust this judge equals n minus 1, then he is the judge. Like, everyone trusts him. Otherwise, he's not. So we can then return a minus 1. So it's the same sort of method. I, I'll say people 
um, who trust judge. And we'll iterate again through the list in trust if the trustee equals the potential judge then we'll add him we'll add him to our set we'll add the truster into this set these are all the people who trust the judge and finally all right if length of people who trust judge if it equals n minus one then return the potential judge. Else, we've gone through all this and and we weren't able to return the potential judge. Then return minus one. See if I got that correct here. And okay, so it looks like our test case worked. Let's submit that. And cool, that did get accepted. Now I had to run a lot of steps here, right? And there are ways to condense this. One of the more clever solutions I've found was um, rather than running through this loop multiple times, why don't we create like a tracker to track the number of people who trust this person. And if this person trusts anybody else, then we could subtract the value from this, from this memo, I guess, or tracker. And that way, at the very end, we could iterate down this tracker and see, is there any person that meets the condition of um, the value equaling n minus 1. So I'll, I'll write it out and hopefully you'll get an idea of what I mean. So we'll first initialize a index with number n, is that right? n, or is it n minus 1? Uh, I think it's n. Let's see here. 5, 3 people, so 0, 1, two, three, yep, so we start with this tracker and what we're gonna do is iterate down our list again. And here's what we'll do. In our tracker, each index number is gonna represent a person. So the truster inside this tracker um, is gonna start with zero, right? But if he trusts somebody, we'll subtract one, we'll say minus equal one. Now, if somebody, if this person, um, sorry about that, minus one, this, if this person is trusted, right, B is the trustee, if this person is trusted, then we'll add one. And this is pretty clever because given all our conditions, if there's one person who doesn't trust anybody, but is trusted by everyone, then the only way this value will be at n minus one is if everyone trusts him and he doesn't exist here, so won't subtract any value, right? Because everyone trusts this guy. Uh, we know that trust is unique. There's never gonna be repeats. So that makes it a lot easier for us to realize, all right, uh, if all these conditions held true, there's going to be one person in here in our tracker that um, equals a value of n minus 1. So once we finished with this tracking, we could say, all right, let's just move through our, um, let's just say person in, in tracker. And what will we say? We'll say, all right, if, um, actually, let's, let's use a range because that, that's gonna make it a little bit easier for us in range of zero to n. Is that right? Zero to n, yes. Yeah, so, and it's a little bit confusing because now I'm using an array, so I have to keep track of this minus one nonsense. So the very first person, if what? If uh, tracker i, if that equals n minus one, then return i plus one, All right? And I, I think that's right. Otherwise return minus one, if we are able to get through the whole thing. Let me see if that works. I might have missed something up here. That looks like it works, so let's commit that. Yep, so that did get accepted. The only confusing part is keeping track of that zero and, and one index, because uh, you know, person one is going to be on that zero index. 
But otherwise, this is very clean solution, pretty clever, because um, my approach was pretty straightforward. This uh, thought about it more in like a high level and was able to come up with this um, really smart solution. So that's it. Hopefully, I explained it well.